And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Santo Domingo. Now honestly, when I saw this game, I thought, eh, I, want it. I might as well try it. Now, here's the reason I thought that, because it's from Pegasus Spiel. I think Pegasus Spiel makes some pretty good card games. This looks a lot like Port Royal, which I really like. I mean, I think it's one of my favorite uh, card games, so I thought, hey, this has you know similar artwork, looks the same, maybe it's an expansion, maybe it's a sequel, it's not. It's a completely different game. It's a bluffing style game, or an outthink your opponent style game. Let me show you. So this board is placed in the middle of the table and it has on it victory points, goods, and, and a trading track. And each player is going to get a set of cards in their color. These cards are going to all be the same. They're going to be numbered from 1 to 8. Now, everyone's going to have two tracking cards in front of them where you're going to track your victory points and you're going to track the number of goods that you have. Players are going to start with goods equal to the number of players in the game. Each round of the game takes place the same way. First, you're going to move these three markers forward equal to how many players are playing the game. So let's say we're playing a five-player game. Each of these would move forward four spaces on that track. Then, everyone's going to secretly pick a card from their hand, play it, and reveal them. The card that you will play then is discarded, and you won't get it back until you play your number eight, which gives you all your cards back. Once the card's been played, we resolve them starting with number one and going to number eight. Number one, each player who played it can get, gets victory points and they get a maximum of two victory points. If I'm the only person to play it, for example, of these four victory points here, I would get two of them and move it up here. If two people played this card, then we would each get two victory points, making this go down to zero. If three people played it, we would each only get one victory point and so on and so forth. Then the twos go. Here you can get up to five victory points. You can get more victory points, but it goes after the captain goes. So that would only be really useful maybe if there's a lot of victory points on the board. The governor, if you play this, you get goods. These don't come from the board. They just are added to your card. You get goods depending on how many people played captains and admirals. So four for each person who played a captain, two for each person who played an admiral. The frigate does the same thing as the other cards did, but with goods. So this could give me up to three goods here from the board, depending, again, it's split between all the players who played frigates. And then the galleon gives you all the goods in the board, again, split between the people who played galleons. Then, who, if you play customs, you will get victory points for each person who played a frigate or galleon, three or one victory point. If you play a seven, trading occurs. When trading occurs, you look at the track. First of all, the marker will move down two spaces for each person over one who traded. And it shows you that here on the board. So let's say I'm the only person to trade, great. I can now trade two goods for one victory point. I have five, so I'll trade four of those and get two victory points. And you can see the farther up this is, the better the ratio is. Up here, it's two goods for three victory points. And then when you play the beggar, you will get goods based on how many cards are still left in your hand. If I get two goods for everyone who played a seven, and then I pick up all my cards. That's it. Now, the goods only go up to 15, and these also, I, they'll be moving up a certain number every round. Um, if anyone trades, this gets reset to zero and goes back up. The other two, if enough victory points and goods aren't taken, they continue to move up. But they're capped at 15. Your own goods are capped at 15. Your victory points go up to 30, and the first person to get to 30 is the winner. There is another side of the board here, and this other side has different ratios on it, which are just harder ratios to pull off. Three goods for one, 10 for 15, you know, so you need a lot more goods to use this side of the board. But that's pretty much how you play. Now I should clarify that getting to 30 doesn't automatically win you the game, because after th everyone gets to 30, everyone will trade in all their goods for 3 to 1 for victory points, and then whoever has the highest victory points is the winner, and, and that also can happen if multiple people get to 30 victory points. The components for this game are okay. This board is not interesting, these cubes aren't interesting, these cards aren't interesting, the artwork on the cards, I mean, it's nice enough, but it's done. It's the same artist, uh, Fremen's Clans, uh, who does the 
the different uh, artwork for all these games, you know, like Port Royale. So it looks exactly like one of those games, really. But, I mean, the colors do help differentiate what the card is trying to do. Eh, but the components for this game are meh at best. So this game is, as I said, it's kind of a bluffing game where you're trying to play the cards, trying to outguess everyone else. Now this game definitely is one of my favorite mechanisms in a game, where you play a card and you keep playing cards until you decide to play a card to pick all your cards that you've played up. There are lots of games that use this, but Santa Domingo is one of the most pure games that does this because there's nothing else in the game. That's the whole game itself. And what you're doing so focused on other players and so focused on what's in the middle of the board. So you saw in the game we're playing, so you get four victory points. Everyone's like, oh, I want some victory points, but I'd rather get good. So maybe no one takes victory points in the first turn. So now there's eight the second turn. So now you're thinking, well, I definitely want to play one of those ones that gives me five victory points. But what if everyone else plays the captains and they all take two, there won't be any left for me. Yeah, but what if other people, I mean, if they're going to play captains and maybe someone else will play the admiral, maybe I'll play the card that gives me goods for each person that does that. <laughs> but of course, Susan thought the exact same thing I did, so she also did that and no one took the victory points. So next turn there's 12. And now everyone's really frenzied. Of course, you also have the knowledge of what cards have been played earlier, which cards can be picked up. So it's not like you're just blindly guessing. You have some knowledge to work with, but you're looking at the board going, is now the time to trade? But what if everyone thinks now is the time to trade? It's a really good time. I mean, it's a good deal. And I have a lot of goods. And man, is this game fun. I love it. It's fast. It feels like you're playing a really solid game. You make great decisions. It moves quickly. There's moments where everyone turns a card over and everyone's like, ah, and there's laughter and accusing of each other. It just works so well. Now, the game is not perfect. It does say on here, two to six players. Eh, let's go with four to six. Two and three don't work as well. Four to six is the sweet spot for this game because there's more things. Like some of the cards in a, in a three-player game, for example, the card that gives you points when other people play the frigates and galleons, that's not as exciting. Maybe both the other players did it, and it works. It's not like the game is not... It's not horrible with those players, but I'd give it a lower rating with two or three. With more players, though, it just shines. And it's the kind of game when you're done playing, you're like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. So while I'm not super keen on the artwork and the look of this game, and it feels very samey to a lot of these other games in this series, I might like this one better than Port Royal, actually. Uh, this has, it, 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 it's so easy to teach. It, you can jump right into it. Games feel different. The two sides of the board, you know, the one side just makes the getting the goods. It just has a slightly different feel to it. And man, this one's going in my collection for sure. Well, no, it's not. I got to give it to Eric Summer, but I'll get my own copy of Santo Domingo because I like it that much. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!